Okay, welcome everyone. Today's topic is what is the exponential of a matrix? Um, let me just jump right into it because the exponential function is probably one of the most important functions in mathematics altogether. I'm not an analogist, for sure not. Uh, it comes from growth rates. It's very natural. It appears everywhere. And if you see it for the first time, in particular in this definition, that's the definition I'm taking, uh, the power series definition. So e to the m is just this power series, 1 plus what, 1m plus 1 over 2 factorial m squared plus 1 over 3 factorial m cubed, and so on and so on. It converges, not quite trivial, but it converges. Um, and if you really see this definition for the first time, you're just like, why, why, why should I care? Why should this be a good definition? Uh, it turns out it really is. It, it captures growth rates and everything. It's just just an amazing definition. In hindsight, this is really one of the best definitions ever. And it, it's really everywhere in mathematics, right? Just e to the one is probably the most famous number. It's e, it's this uh, 2.7 something. And it's just everywhere. It's just, just so ridiculous, just so ridiculously successful. This definition is so ridiculously successful. It makes me very happy. Also, I'm not an analysis or anything, but what I like about it is this definition. Like, oh yeah, actually it's just a sum. So a sum, right? This is basically a sum. So if you think about a, a one times one matrix, that's a number. That's just a number. Um, and this is a definition for a number. So the question would be, can we generalize this definition for matrices, right? Wouldn't it be awesome? I mean, exponential functions, they are pretty cool. Wouldn't it be awesome to have an exponential function for matrices? Well, let's see. So what you usually do if you kind of think about such questions is, hmm, so what do we actually need? So you just remember your the, the all the facts you have seen about the exponential function, you look it up somewhere, maybe if you don't remember like me, you just don't remember how it works. <laughs> you just look it up, it's so well known, it's fine. And you realize that all we need basically is that we can kind of scale up, multiply something, right? So let's say we have some real vector space and some element M in my real vector space. And all I need to basically know is that I can scale up, multiply it, right? That's what I call it. With, with scalars in, let's say, R. Um, and so that's what we need to know. So that's why I real vector space. And you need to multiply M itself because you need to make sense of, uh, well, M to the first is still okay, that's M, but M squared, for example, would be M times M. And as soon as you have that, as soon as you have those properties, in, in some sense, at least, without worrying about convergence, we are algebra, we don't worry about convergence, we just write something down, we do it like Euler, we just like write something down and claim that works, basically. So without worrying about convergence, this definition looks really good if you can multiply M with scalars and with itself, right? And then you would observe um, that actually you have some classical properties of the exponential function like, well, e to the zero is one. You basically look at the proof. You basically don't need to know anything about it. It just it just follows by definition. Right? If you plot in zero here, yeah, it looks like that. What what to, what to follow by for a definition? This one also follows directly by definition because, well, you have numbers and those two numbers will cancel, but I will write it down nevertheless because you will see it in a second. So e to the p inverse n p is the same as p inverse e to the MP because everything just cancels and the only thing that's written here is basically E to the M equals E to the M. And that's, these are almost the defining properties of the exponential function. There's one more and it's this one. So exponential function turns a sum into a product. And that's not quite trivial to see from this expression. So this is, this is a little bit of a question mark here. So you look up the proof and how it works and you realize that the proof on, basically only uses that the two, two elements commute, which is true for numbers. But you really need to compute uh, commute them. 
And if you want to plot in matrices, and that's what we want to do, is you should be aware that matrices is not necessarily complete. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, so these are the three defining properties. And in this expression upstairs here, you could, you could basically plot in whatever you want, right? That's all fine. Well, so let's look at Jordan blocks. Why not? When you start with a matrix, start by looking at Jordan blocks. Uh, so here's my Jordan block. The, these are lambda is my eigenvalue. And this is a three by three Jordan block with some off diagonal entries here and here. And you observe actually that this is nothing else than a diagonal matrix, the green matrix, which I have now underlined in blue for some reasons. I don't know, <laughs> whatever. And the red matrix, which I do in red. It, this kind of a triviality, you just decompose additively into two matrices. But the point is one of them is diagonal. This is the green matrix, which is in blue downstairs. And I, I, I don't want to do this anymore. So let me just put it in green. So the green matrix is in green. And um, into a nilpotent matrix, the n matrix. A nilpotent means a, a certain power of it is zero. And if you think about it, well, that's something you can do for any Jordan block. And you just calculate just naively, what is e to the d? Right? Just use the formula, just use this formula from before, just put in your d matrix. Well, it's the identity plus the matrix plus one factorial times d squared, but squaring d is super easy because it's a diagonal matrix. You just square the entries plus one over three factorial times d cubed, Cubing D is very easy because it's a diagonal matrix. It's just a cube of the diagonals. So actually what this is, this is entry-wise, ignoring the zero entries. It's just, it's just exactly the same sum as before. So you just get E to the lambda, right? That's it. Entry-wise, this is exactly what, what, what's happening here, right? So taking E of a diagonal matrix, that seems to make sense. That seems to be good. So let's look at, Let's look at the, uh, the red matrix, e to the n for a nilpotent matrix. Well, you write down identity. Well, you write down the matrix itself. You write down n squared. And you write down n cubed. Oh, n cubed is already 0. Very good. So from here onwards, everything just dies, because n to the fourth then will also be 0, and so on. And what you just add, do have a finite sum? It just collapses to a finite sum. No convergence is just collapses to a finite sum. And you just add up, just add everything up, and you get this matrix. Okay, taking exponential of a nilpotent matrix seems to be easy as well. So let's see. Um, well, some funny fact. So in every Jordan decomposition, actually the n and the d matrix will commute. You can you can try to verify this here uh, by hand. I will do this. So it's just a matrix calculation. But it's true for any Jordan decomposition, and you can also you can also prove it here by yourself. It's not it's not hard. And this means you can use the, you can use this property here, the, the blue property, well the light blue the light blue property. So the light blue property says that e to the m would be just e to the d times e to the n. But what, we've co computed those two matrices. It's just this one. And this one, you just multiply them, and well, there you go. You get E of a Jordan block. Without worrying about convergence at all, the only thing where convergence kicked in was um, for the diagonal, which was kind of a trivial convergence argument. Uh, and you have to believe me that this calculation really goes through for abstract symbols as long as they commute. But just it's very easy to check. Just look up the original proof that you might have seen in whatever kind of calculus analysis class. Look at it. Forget that those things are real numbers or whatever, whatever complex numbers, whatever you've seen. And just, just check whether the argument goes through for matrices. And it, 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 it will basically. OK, so for Jordan blocks, it's actually pretty, pretty cute, right? So the answer is actually it's e, for the Jordan block it's e to the lambda times e to the n, where n is the nilpotent part. So this is the red matrix. Uh, this is the red matrix. 
of, of the dollar block. And Alice, uh, Lambda is the eigenvalue. That's pretty cool. I, I think that's pretty cool. But just naively generalizing the exponential function, you get a very nice result. And the question you should ask is, what, what is so special about the Jordan block? Doesn't it always work? Well, yes. And this is really where the Jordan decomposition comes into the game. You can always uh, bring a, a complex matrix, say, on, on Jordan form, which means here is your Jordan form, which is d plus n, as I explained, and there's some base change matrix P. This is just a base change. Okay. I need you to do exactly the same calculation. E to the M is equal to the loop, and you could pull P down. Verify that. That's not so hard to verify. You use that. Um, you use that dn equals nd for the Jordan form, and you get this result. So in order to compute e of a matrix, you don't need to worry about convergence. You get this diagonal matrix, which converges to, to the e to the powers of the eigenvalues, and you have a finite sum matrix. So this is a finite sum. And of course, P is just some matrix. So in this example, for example, this is some matrix, OK? And I already went ahead and asked some computer program to co compute the, uh, the Jordan form. So this is D plus N. This is my Jordan form. Uh, diagonal part is uh, the diagonal part was the green part here. It's, it's of course, this game here. And uh, the potent part is this game here. And you just do the calculation. So here's my, oops, this is my green matrix. Of course, here's my nil potent matrix. Here's my green matrix. And for almost all practical purposes, you first of all can just ignore those two. They will appear, of course, but we basically can ignore them. And you would have to multiply everything out. But basically what you do is you take, this one will give you e to the power of the eigenvalues. And this one will be some finite thing. and it will, will, will stop after a certain point. Um, and I just calculated what it is. And you put them together, so those two, you put them together, you get a new matrix, which is which is e to the of the Jordan form. Maybe I should call it G Jordan a noble form. And then you just undo the base change. And that's it. That's how you compute the matrix without worrying about convergence. Right? We're algebraized. I don't know anything about convergence. That's how I compute. I don't know anything. Uh, yeah, that's that's exactly what you do. It's exponential of the matrix. Is this uh, um, this power series, which a priori might converge or not, but it always converges. It always can be computed using the the Jordan normal form. Uh, you want like something that is a, some kind of a real or complex matrix. Let's let's just say it's a complex matrix, okay? Because then you can go to the Jordan normal form to compute it. But in principle, you can define it at least for for the matrices. Mm. And n equals one, of course, recovers the, the the classical exponential function. Okay, let me give you some examples, which is pretty cool. So the first thing you observe is. Um, well, okay. <laughs> Let me give you some example which I, which, I, which I found pretty cool. Um, so this is a funny notation you might not have seen before for a matrix. So this is my matrix, basically the bottom, uh, like this is a matrix. And there's some entry somewhere in this grid. This is a grid, okay. And there's some entry somewhere and I indicate the, the entry by height. So this just means, this is very easy. So the height is always one. So this matrix is called a diamond matrix, which basically looks like this as a matrix. So it has ones here, it has zeros here everywhere. And it's a fun exercise that if you do the exponential of this matrix, you actually get what is called a Gaussian matrix. And it's called a Gaussian matrix because it's a matrix that kind of, where the numbers slowly get, uh, smaller if you if you go to the corners of the matrix. Remember, this is just a matrix notation. It's just a matrix and they indicate the size of the, the values by uh, by the height in this picture. 
and, and also a funny calculation if you do this with, with a, if you then go on and take the exponential of a Gaussian matrix you get this funny thing which just says which just is just like a Gaussian matrix like going smaller in all directions except that on the diagonal you have you have an axis which is bigger than everything else um, I, I just I don't know. I just found that, that pretty nice. Anyway, um, the point is exponentials do something nice. They're easy to define. And I hope you, you like my way of illustrating matrices. So again, uh, let me say it again. This is a very effective way of, of illustrating matrices. You have a matrix with some entry and you just plot the matrix itself in some, on some XY plane. And at all the points where the matrix would have an entry you indicate it by the corresponding height. Gives you three-dimensional illustrations of, of a matrix. Okay. Um, but otherwise, thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.